Court Church. Good morning. How are we all doing? Praise the name of the Lord. Can we please, can we please take a moment? Can we please fill the front seat and just, you know, occupy the front seats, please. I'm begging all of us. Let's do that real quick. We have one minute to do that. I'm not seeing anybody moving, please. Upstanding, and can you grab someone by the hand? That is why I said we should all move closer so that we can hold our hands. Please, can you grab someone by the hand? And let's declare this together You are my strength, strength like no other. You are my strength, and strength like no other. Come on, say it like you mean it. You are my strength. And strength like no other. Come on, give Jesus your praise wherever you are. Clap your hands like that. Can we go like this? strength strength like no other strength like no other rich as to me
you are our strength strength like no other you are our joy joy like no other you are our peace oh Jehovah Shalom Shalom like no other you are our hope hope like no other lift your hands wherever you are I want to teach you this simple song I close your eyes wherever you are Up my hand, touch your heart. Let us sing and up my song, touch your heart. My worship, touch your heart. My devotion, touch your heart. Let the left to say, let the left to knock my hands, touch your heart. Let us sing and knock my songs, touch your heart. My worship, touch your heart. My devotion, one more time. Touch your heart, let the left and say, let the left and knock my hands, touch your heart, let the sing and knock my song, touch your heart, my worship, touch your heart, my devotion.
touch your heart I worship touch your heart my devotion touch your heart singing softly say my worship touch your heart my devotion one more time touch your heart my worship touch your heart My heart, my soul, she's take control. Has a land to walk your way. So day by day, as I follow through my devotion beyond to you. My heart say, my heart, my soul, please take control as a land, as a land to walk your way.
as I learn, as I learn to walk your way. So day by day, sing it again sing with all faith my heart and my soul my heart and my soul this very control I as I learn to walk your way Can we say it again? You are worthy. You are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God. 
Take a minute and be silent before him. Just gaze upon his presence. Just behold his beauty. He's worthy of all our praise. It is his breath in our lungs. And so we've come to pour out our praise unto him. Behold his beauty. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. Can you please throw your hands into the air? You are worthy. You are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place. One more time. Can you please declare that with faith? You are worthy. You are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise. Take a moment, please still stand. Before we do our praises, can we bow ourselves to King Jesus wherever you are? Come on, wherever. Just bow before King Jesus. He's worthy of it. He's worthy of this. He's worthy of this. We bow to you, Jesus. Amen. God is good. <laughs> And all the time, God is good. All right. Can we please give our offerings real quick? Please put your hands in your pocket. Take whatever you brought unto God. And I'm not going to pray for you, but I want you to speak over your offering wherever you are. If you're looking for something from God, let this be an offering and as well as see that you will sow to bring forth fruits. Please pray over your offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless every hand that gave. Bless every heart that gave. Jesus, precious. Amen. And if you are watching us online, please, the numbers will be posted on your screen. You can cash up. You can also zail your offering to the number on the screen. God bless you. Amen. Shall we please be upstanding once again? I need you to check yourself like that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm 
But the Lord has been so gracious to us. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one as we gather here in the house of the Lord and uh, we worship in him. If you are watching us online and you, you think you can come in and you're not coming in, you are losing because every day we are increasing in number. So if you think because of COVID you're not coming, you're losing. We will urge you to come join us as we worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I hope the Lord will bless us before we leave. I was praying and thinking about what the Lord wants us to hear. And when I was talking to somebody, the person, the last word the person said, touched my heart. And the Lord spoke to me about it. And those last words were, bless you. So the Lord spoke to my heart and said, stay blessed. It's something that we hear day in and day out. But what does it actually mean? So this morning, the topic of my message is stay blessed. Stay blessed. It's like you're telling somebody bye-bye. All oh, that you say, oh, okay, stay blessed. Have a nice day. The Lord has been blessing us in so many ways. But many a times, as human beings, we think that blessings is something that is physical. We just see it riding in an expensive car. Oh, the Lord has blessed him. Living in a mansion. Oh, go and see the house. The Lord has blessed him. Having beautiful children. Oh, the Lord has blessed him. We see all these physical things and we say, the Lord has blessed the person. But to, when we say stay blessed, to stay is to remain in the same place. To stay is to remain in the same place. So, stay blessed. If you want to stay in the blessings of the Lord, then you have to be in the same place. To remain in a specific state or position. To remain in a specific place or position. And blessing is to confer or invoke divine favor upon, ask God to look favorably Unto. So when you say, oh, God bless you, we are asking God to favorably show you something, look down upon you, to concentrate or to sanctify by a religious right to make pronounced holy. Or better still, to will the good of another person. When we want another person, we want to wish that person well, he we say, oh, God bless you. But is that all when we talk about the blessings of God? We often hear, I am blessed by three healthy children, or I am blessed by this wonderful car. I am blessed by this mansion. I am blessed by this job. Is that all? 
that the blessing is. We are blessed to live in a country of a such comfort, freedom and opportunity. We are blessed, that's what we say. In America, we are blessed. We are blessed to be here, that's what we say. But is that all? Is that all? What happens when you don't feel blessed? What, what happened? There are some people in America here who don't even feel blessed. Are those people blessed or not? There are some people in our current circumstances, they are not blessed. That's what they are thinking. Are, they not, are those people not blessed? They are also blessed. Let's take for instance, you have deaths in your family. Like Brother Kofi, who has about three deaths in about two, three months in the family. Are they not blessed? When all these things begin to happen, does it mean that the hand of God is not on them? Does it mean that they are not blessed? What's the meaning of blessing? When we say stay blessed, God bless you, I'll bless you. What does it mean? Blessing, according to the English language, is to make holy, concentrate, to endow with divine favor or protection or bringing pleasure or relief as a welcome contrast to what one has previously experienced. So what it's saying in the English language, when we say bless your God, bless your blessing, we are talking about receiving something favorable. Receiving something favorable. But the Greek definition of the word blessed comes from the word makarios. Makarios. So when I was thinking and I was reading and studying and I saw this word, I'm like, well, is that what Pastor Joe got the name from? <laughs> you know the first name of her daughter? Makarios. This describes a believer as being in an enviable. Listen to the word. A believer has been in an enviable position for receiving God's protection, uh, God's provision, as being an extension of His grace. The grace of God has given us some experience, some protection, something that we don't deserve and is enviable. Something that is enviable. This is grace. This is blessing. This is blessing. I think, and I believe, uh, this definition will surprise you. It will surprise you. Because we don't think blessing is something that is the grace of God putting us in a place. We think, oh, blessing is receiving something physical. When we see the English word, the primary definition of a term, blessing is not wealth or comfort. 
Let me take it again. The English dictionary, the meaning, the primary definition of the term blessing is not wealth or comfort, but rather being made holy. Being made holy. Since we are made holy through salvation in Jesus Christ, in essence, the trust form of being blessed is to be made aware of our wretched state led to repentance, sanctified for holiness, and to one day receive the crown of righteousness. What all this long sentence means is when we talk about the blessings of God, you got to know the state that you were in, that sinful state. Bonia, nanka abu wosu. Bonia, nanka wuti ma wuntu me every month. Yet the Lord God Himself, through His love and His grace, brought you out, sanctified you, made you holy, and you are expecting to be in his presence one of these days. That is our hope, to be with the Lord one of these days. So when non-believers are saying, oh, I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed, their blessings are temporary. Their blessings are temporary. Why do I say their blessings are temporal? Because it will end here on this earth. It doesn't matter how many cars you have. It doesn't matter how many houses you have. It doesn't matter how many uh, belongings and properties you have. If you don't have Christ, those physical blessings, as you call it, will all end here. The day that you put your hands on your chest, everything will end. There will be no blessing. But if you are blessed, if you are blessed in the Lord, you look beyond these physical things. You look beyond these physical properties. You look beyond these physics, physical gains and you know that your soul is saved. And that is the blessings. That is the blessings. So now, let's turn to Ephesians, chapter number one. Spoken a lot. Looks like, oh, this man is not going to give us any scripture today. <laughs> Ephesians, chapter number one. Verse number three, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Hallelujah. He has blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places places. So our blessings are not physical. It is obedient in ye. Now when you are in the year, and my will be on for say, on your means now. And now I be a Christian, you know, on your media or three sra and a sra. Now a three sra a sumbo as soon as I see today. You are being blessed with spiritual blessings. And that is the greatest one that we have. We are looking forward to be with the Father one of these days. The earthly blessings, as I said before, when you read Revelation chapter number 3, verse 15 to 19, it talks about the church of Laodicea, the church of Laodicea, who were lukewarm, 
And the Bible says they thought they were rich. Take your time and read it for time factor. Take your time and read it. They thought they were rich, but yet they were poor. Why? Because of the spiritual blessings. Because of spiritual blessings. You have been blessed spiritually. You have been blessed. It might be possible. You might be walking and you don't even have a dime in your pocket. But the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will be upon your heart because of the blessings that you have. People will see you and they will say, oh, see that rich young woman. See that rich young guy. Yet, you might not even have anything. It is the blessings of God. Spiritual blessings. Let us not be like the church of Laodicea. Who thought they were rich? Yet, they didn't have anything in the Lord. And the Bible says, God told them to change their ways. Either to be hot or to be cold. We don't need to be like that. They thought they had closed themselves, but yet they were naked. We don't need to be like that. The blessings that we have are not just fortunate. They are not just fortunate. It is the gift of God that he gave to us. It is a gift of God that he gave to us. This, of course, presents a problem for a believer when they suddenly find themselves in circumstances that fall short of the blessing, of the blessed life they expected. What I'm, I wrote down is, Sometimes, we as Christians, sometimes we are expecting to be blessed physically. So when we don't see that blessing, we get disappointed. He loved you so much so that he sent his only son to die for you. The only son. How many of us here will give your only amount, the only amount, Let's take it, for instance, the only amount you have with you is $10. And somebody came to you and said, I need this. I am in desperate need. Help me. How much do we need? Ten. <laughs> and you're going to look at the face of the person, thinking back and forward. There is no money coming from anywhere. That is the only money you have. And you will still dip into your pocket and give it. God, that is how much he loved us. He looked at us and the only begotten son, he said, no, I want you to be blessed. So he gave his son for you that you will be blessed. We are not going to look for promotions. I'm not saying promotions are not good. They are good. I'm not saying wealth is not good. They are good. I am not saying that things of this world are not good. They are all good. But what I am trying to let you understand is that is not our first priority. Our first priority is the blessings of God. That spiritual blessings that he has given to us. That is the most 
and the most, uh, the most important one, the most efficient one, the most graceful one that we can have, the blessings of God. And because of this, we must anchor ourselves in what is true rather than what we see and make us sense of we have to anchor ourselves. We have to put ourselves in what is truth. And what is truth? The truth is God loves you and he has given you his son. He has blessed you with eternal life. Stay in it. Last week, we heard that keep the faith. Today I'm telling you, stay in the blessings that God has given to you. Stay in it. And as I said before, staying is to be at one place. You don't have to be going up and down. Stay in it. He has blessed you with eternal life. He has blessed you with eternal life. Stay in it. Stay in it. And it will be a blessing unto you. So, all that I am saying, what am I more than anything else? What I am seeking, is it more than anything else? My second question is, am I following Christ, expecting earthly gifts of comfort and prosperity to follow? I don't know if you get me. This is a question. Am I following Christ, expecting earthly gifts and comfort and prosperity? If you are seeing a man in a decrease to a chiana, there are some people in this world and in churches today, and unfortunately, most most churches, you go to most most churches today, they are packed, and all the people you see, about ninety percent of them, are following, just because of earthly prosperity. There are some pastors who are preaching and all their preaching is about prosperity. How about salvation? No. How about the Holy Spirit's power? No. How about heaven? No. All that we know is about prosperity. Is that why we are following Christ? Are my comforts Causing me to be lukewarm? Are my comforts causing me to be lukewarm? This is what I want you to ask yourself. Because maybe you have these worldly things which is making you comfortable. Is it making you lukewarm? Like the church of Laodicea. They had all these things and they thought they have it, they became lukewarm. Are you becoming lukewarm? Botro bojo. Botro bojo. O nyashe, o nyenyuno. Asa wo sumo nyame, asa wo nsumo nyame. Ewiase niema asa wadwene mu ma. Ewiase niema nkuto na wudi akire. Is that what you are doing? Let's be careful. Let's be careful. For Christ did not promise us just blessings physically, prosperity physically, and that is it. No, that is not the promise that he gave to us. We are actually promised that this life will be filled with suffering, hardships, 
and dying to ourselves and dying to ourselves and our earthly desires. That is the promise he gave to us. The promise he gave to us is suffering. Why you are going, you are going to ask me why suffering? I thought when I come to Christ, everything should be honey and milk. The more he allows you to go through suffering, the more you grow in the Lord. Amen. I know you don't like sufferings. But thank God for teachers. When you go to school, the teacher will teach you. And before you get promoted, before you get a certificate, they need to put you to test. They test you. And if you fail, you stay. You don't get any certificate. But if you pass, you move on. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the same way God, our heavenly Father, who loves us so much, so much, has promised us that there will be suffering. And this suffering will make us grow in him. Not just suffering alone. Sometimes there will be hardships. Hardships. And that also helps you to grow. Not hardships alone, but dying to yourself. Dying to yourself. Sometimes as Christians, we feel too much of ourselves. We, we, we are too sensitive to ourselves. We, we, we think we, we are the only person in this world. But Christ wants us to die to ourselves and to the desires of this world. To the desires of this world. So if we don't reframe our minds, if we don't set our minds to spiritual things, we will always be babes in Christ. We need to reset our mind. We need to reframe our thinking. We need to set our minds again so that we will know that the blessings of God is not just physical things. The blessings of God is not prosperity, just prosperity. Yes, prosperity is some blessings, but it's not just prosperity. It's far beyond prosperity. It's far beyond prosperity. Christ can reshape our entire perspective through the power of his word and the Holy Spirit. It's only Christ who can do that for us. Sometimes we want to do it, but unfortunately, we cannot do it. We have to allow Christ and his word. That is why we need to be reading the word. That is why we need to be reading the word. If we don't read the word, if we don't pray, things of this world will fill our minds. And if we are filled with things of this world, we will grow lukewarm. Let us grow in the Lord. Let us grow in the Lord. So, I have about three things. Let's see. We are blessed because of spiritual blessings that far our outweigh our earthly blessings. This is the first thing I want you to know. We are blessed because of Spiritual blessings that far outweigh the earthly blessings. So what I mean is the blessings that we are talking about as Christians, that we are blessed. 
It's not just the physical blessings. It's not just anything that, is, that we have. That is what we read in Ephesians chapter number one, verse three. That we are blessed with heavenly, uh, we are blessed with spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. We are blessed with spiritual blessings. So if somebody is blessed physically, prosperity, and that person isn't a Christian, the blessing is very short. The blessing is very short. No matter what we receive or don't receive in a temporal form, we have been given every blessing through the, com the complete work of Christ. This is one thing I want you to know. We are blessed through the complete work of Jesus Christ, his righteousness, his resources, his privilege, his position, and his power. This is what he is giving to us. But he often works these spiritual blessings into our lives through circumstances that most people will not consider to be blessing. Most people will not consider that to be blessing. As I said, suffering and hardships. Sometimes this is what the Lord put us through to bless us, but we don't consider them as blessings. Today, rephrase your thinking and know that God is blessing you. The second thing I want you to know is that we are blessed because as chosen and adopted sons of do and daughters of the king, we will receive the riches, blessings, and the very nature of Christ. Let's go to chap uh, chapter number one of Ephesians 4 through 6. Verse number 4 through 6. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that ye should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us upon the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. What a scripture. What a scripture. We have been chosen before the foundation of the world that ye should be holy and blameless before him. And this is one thing that I want you to know. To be holy and blameless before God is not your doing. It's the righteousness of Christ. And that is what he said. It is the righteousness of Christ. Christ has made us that. We are blessed beyond measure as we are being made holy through his undeserved grace. There is no greater blessing than this. No greater blessing than this. Oh. You. I don't know about you, but I know myself. There is no amount of money that I could give to make me holy. No. There is no amount of money that I could give to make me stand before him complete. But his grace. But his grace. And this is a blessing. You have been blessed. 
Eto da biye isra wo nyame dia maye no. Ye nhunu. Obi epese obeye te se wo. Me ka se obi pese obeye te se wo a. Obi a onye Kristo ni. Ohu se ne awusi kɔ na wosi ba. Owo ne sika, owo bibia ha na nsu ohu a na nka onya wo a nka ope. And this is the blessings of God. God has blessed you spiritually. The third thing I want you to know is we are blessed because we are redeemed and forgiven, receiving the riches of his grace as he has made known to us the mystery of his will, the gospel. The gospel is will. The gospel is his will. The gospel is his will. And he's made this mystery known to us that we have received riches of his grace. The riches of his grace. Sometimes I'm talking about some educated people. They have their masters, their PhDs, their whatever. They are professors, whatever they are. But when they get to this, the word of God, they cannot explain. Why? Because the mystery in this book has not been given to them. But the mystery of the riches of, uh, the riches of this mystery has been given to you. And this is a blessing. You sit down, you read it, and when you begin to talk, when you begin to explain it, some people ask you, now who could school with him? And he now could see us at the way. And he now could sorry. And then a cousin. They are all because you have been blessed with the riches of this mystery in the word. You have been blessed. Fourthly, we are blessed. Listen carefully. Because we have a guaranteed inheritance. You have a guaranteed inheritance. And we have been sealed with a promise Holy Spirit until we acquired possession of it. Hmm. I get this, this point, and I'm like, I am relaxing. I am relaxing. The word guaranteed. We all know that when you come to a point whereby you sign agreement and it becomes a guarantee that you're going to receive something, you rest assured and you know that everything will be all right. I want us to know that we've been promised and we've been guaranteed and we have a guaranteed inheritance, a guaranteed inheritance. Hey, o nyan kupon anka se eja padie no, wa se obo se ya wudia. E ya wudia. Na se o nyan kupon eja padie e ya wudia. Na die mbio e na wo hwehwe. A DMBO and our future. What else do you need? You have this inheritance and you've been sealed. You've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. He's giving you the Holy Spirit that is making you an adopted child of God. That is making you an adopted child of God. You need not to be afraid of anything. You can be reading this because of time from Ephesians 1, 11 to 14. You will see that there. But because of time, let's continue. I just want you to know that buying a dream house, restoring your health, Experiencing loss and trials of this life all begin to pale in comparison as we grasp the eternal 
inheritance that we are guaranteed as a child of God. Our citizenship will be in the new Jerusalem, unshakable, secured in the eternal kingdom. That is where our citizenship will be. Sometimes, when we come to America, you get your green card, and maybe after five years, you filed for citizenship. You go for an interview, and they gave you that paper, that paper, as a citizen. You are so happy. Now I am a citizen of America. You run for your passport. Oh, you are happy because you are a citizen. But look at how things are going in America now. Those, uh, those, those of us who have been here for long, um, they can testify. I just came here, so I don't know much about it. But those who have been here for long can testify that you could go to grocery with $25 and come home with a full cart then. Now, you go to grocery with $200 and come out with an empty cart, nothing in it. What is happening? You're happy you are an American, but American is descending. America is going down. Be happy that you are a citizen of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Heaven, things do not change. And he said, I am making everything new. And in there, there will be no pain. There will be no sorrow. There will be no hardships. There will be nothing. Just enjoying. And that is where you belong to. You belong to that heaven. Let us know, as Christians, we belong to this nation. But for us, for us to stay blessed, and let us look at these four last things. Now, I'll bring my message to a close. In Romans chapter number 12, reading from verse number 1 to 4, but first of all, in verse 1, he said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So the first thing we need to do as Christians, being blessed, is to present ourselves as living sacrifice. Let us present ourselves to the Lord. Let us give ourselves to the Lord. Let us be for the Lord. Sometimes when I was studying this, I was asking myself to present. What does it mean? But let's take, for instance, as an illustration, couples, a man and his wife. If they give themselves to each other, it's not all about sex. No, forget about sex. But when they give themselves to each other, they understand themselves. They go to every place by themselves. They do everything together because they have presented themselves to each other. They trust themselves. They believe in themselves. They do everything in common. So the Bible is saying, present yourself as a living sacrifice. Give yourself as a living sacrifice. Let the Lord take you. Number two. Verse number two. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. What does it mean? Don't be going along with this world. Going along with this world will not end well with you. You have been blessed. You have been saved. 
You have been given the things of this uh, of heaven. So don't be going with this world. Don't be transformed. Do not be transformed, conformed to this world. But be ye transformed. But be ye transformed with the renewing of your mind. Number three, renew your mind. If you do not go with this world, the next thing is you renew your mind. Renew your mind. So today, if you've been thinking that blessing is just physical, blessing is just pe- people that I see with prosperity, blessing is people that I see with all these things, renew your mind and know that you have been blessed. You have been blessed. And lastly, let's continue. Verse number four. Let's go to verse three and four. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, do not think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. This is the last thing, and that's more important. Don't think highly of yourself. Don't think highly of yourself. If you go to the world, the secular world, there we have the bosses, we have the CEOs, we have this, we have that, and especially when you go to Ghana and you see your boss coming, you either do this, you bow down your head as he is speaking, you, don't even, you can't even look at their faces because they are your supreme. But in Christ, let us remember that Christ himself as the master, as the teacher, stooped down. He stooped down and washed the feet of the disciples. And let us do this to all the people. We need to humble ourselves. Do not let us think highly of ourselves. Let us think soberly in all things. Yes, we are blessed in Christ. Yes, we are blessed in Christ. We are loved. We are chosen. We are redeemed. We are forgiven. We are freed. We are sanctified and promised an eternal inheritance with all the riches, glories, and character of our Savior. I just read what I, I just want to read what I wrote down again. And then you will think about it. We are blessed in Christ. We are loved. We are chosen. We are redeemed. We are forgiven. We are freed. We are sanctified. And promised an eternal inheritance with all the riches, glories, and character of our Savior. For the glory of God, we are blessed. And may we all proclaim how truly blessed we are as we see Christ working himself more deeply into us, even through circumstances that seems far from being blessing. May the Lord bless us and let us know that we have been blessed in all circumstances. Shall we bow down our heads as we pray? And I want you to be praying as you bow down your head. You have been blessed. You have been blessed. 
you have been blessed. But I want you to pray that Lord help me that I might stay in the blessing. I must stay in the blessing. So when we stay blessed, we will stay in it. We will not go anywhere. The Lord who has given us salvation, the Lord who has guaranteed us this spiritual blessing, commit yourself to him that he will do all things for you. Hallelujah. Continue to pray and commit yourselves to the Lord. Commit yourself to the Lord. That the Lord will help you. That the Lord will help you. That the Lord will help you to stay and to remain in Him as though things may go wrong, things may be hard, things may not go the way you want it to be, but pray that the Lord will give you strength to stay in Him and to remain in Him, to stay in Him and to remain in Him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Continue to pray as we're going to dine with the Lord. For the Bible says, some people, after Jesus Christ feeding the 5,000, the following day they, were, they all came looking for him. Not because he, they, they, they want him to be, uh, they, they want him to speak to them, but just because they wanted bread and uh, fish that he gave to them. That is why they were following him. We are not following him because of this physical blessing. Physical blessing. Physical blessing. That is not why we are following Christ. But we are following Christ because eternally he has given us eternal life. He has purchased our salvation. So pray that the Lord will continue to help you focus on him. Continue to pray and ask, your, give, give, ask the Lord to search you. Ask the Lord to search you that he will cleanse you. Because when we go to him, when we go to him, we come to his table with a heart full of sin, a heart full of sin, it will end as good. You have punishment. Pray and ask the Lord to set you and to set you free. Ask the Lord to forgive you all your sins. Everybody saved. 
Shall we all stand as we Father, we want to thank you this morning once again. It's been your grace and mercy, Lord, that you have brought us to your table. We give you all the glory and all the praise. We want to thank you. We want to thank you. We want to bless you. And we want to worship you. It's you, O oh God, who purchased our salvation. And it's you, O oh God, who bless us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. So we give you praise. Lord, as we come before your table, we are praying that you will continue to bless us and bless us indeed as we partake these emblems. We pray, O oh God, that you will continue to let us stay in your blessings as we partake this. For I received from the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he is giving thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we all take of the bread? In the same manner, he took, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Shall we all drink of the cup? Shall we lift up our voices at this time and give him all the praise? Give him all the glory. Give him all the adoration. Shall we worship him? Lift up your voice as we give him praise. As we give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give us a song. song. Shall we give God clap offering? We can do better than this. Come on, let's give God clap offering. Shall we have our seats? And what do we say to the man of God? Papa Nyami, Oishra Ubebre. Onko Soma Adomno Enye Kese. Oma Ona Hwadeng. Nabri Biara Wa Yine Hinta Sem Edi Edi Achira Wa Naosu Onye Bi Edi Ama Nema. Ewe Yesu Dimo. Amen. Amen. Stay blessed. If you we well, we didn't know it, now we know it. So we're not just going to say stay blessed to anybody at all without meaning. Once again, we are all welcome to the house of the Lord. One accord is located at 652 Elizabeth Street, Port Boy, 0886. One and to the visitors or to the viewers online, please, please come and let us all worship together. Back to school is on Sunday, the 3rd of September. As we all know, we want to pray for our children before they go to school. So please, on that day, bring all 
our kids here so that the pastors will lay hands on them before they go to school. And um, the teachers and the church board, especially Auntie Frisia, wants to know the grades of our children. So please, parents, give your, your children's grades to the teachers or Auntie Frisia so they may have them. If you have their number, you can test it to them or you can go to them on the floor, on the basement, and give their, your children's grades to them. As we all know, our prayer line activities is still ongoing. Uh, in the morning, we pray and we have hesitation before we take our daily activities. And then in the evening is the Bible studies. As the preacher was preaching, you heard it. He says, for you to stay on the blessings, you need to study the Bible. Not just studying it, but being the doer of it and being act upon it too. So please, let us all come Monday through Friday. In the morning, it's 6 a.m., 5.30 a.m. to 6.30. And then in the evening, it's 6 p.m. to 7. Calendary, we're studying the book of John, the book of St. John. We are in chapter number 18. When you have time, please read through and if there's anything you don't understand, when you come, you may ask questions. Or if there's something that God laid on your heart, come and let us all share together. Mondays are purposely for whatever we heard on the pulpit Sunday. As pastor was preaching, I was about to ask him a question, but I couldn't because I cannot raise my hands over here and ask that question. So tomorrow, we may all have a chance to ask questions. My question is this. So being a Christian, it's not good for me to be a rich man. So tomorrow, pastor will answer it for me. Amen. And uh, the number to join the line is 425-436-6399. 425-436-6399. And then the access code is 691-919-POUND. And if you are using the phone that they will charge you, please download the test app, app on your phone. And that will give you access to join for free. Amen. Shall we all stand as we bring our service to the end? This morning they sang this song and it touches my heart. It says, my heart, my soul, please take control. As I learn to walk your ways, so day by day, as I follow through, my devotion be unto you. Pray and commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. And ask God, as you have heard his word, you may meditate and be a doer of whatever he has given to you today. Before you go home from here, I just want you to think about something. There's a common scripture that we all say. So let me say it and let's see if somebody can finish it for me. It is the blessings of the Lord. Oh, I can hear you. It is the blessings of the Lord. It is the blessings of the Lord that maketh one rich and add no sorrow. And you heard today that the blessings of God is actually the holiness of God. So can we substitute the blessings with holiness? So now repeat it. It's what? It's the holiness of God that maketh you rich. How many of you want to be rich in this place? I want to see by hands. How many of you want to be rich in this place? So then what do you have to pursue? 
You see, there are deep things in the word of God that a child of God needs to understand. And let me add one more to it. Deuteronomy 6.24. It says, all these commandments I have given to you for your good. Observe them and they shall make you prosperous and they shall give you long life. Every commandment that God has given to us, he said, and the Lord commanded us to observe all the statutes, to fear the Lord our God. Why? Oh, I can't hear you. Why? No, 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 no. I don't think so. Are you sure? Come on, read again. Let's read. Say what? Ah! I thought say Miss Runya me and Miss Roma will be. Why do you fear God? For my good. And not my good sometimes. Then add the last line. No, no, don't, don't go. 24, let's stay on 24. 25, we'll take it tomorrow whilst we're steady. How many of you want God to preserve you? Then obey his status. The same status that makes you holy is the same status that is going to make you prosperous. And it's the same statue that is going to preserve you. And it's the same statue that is going to make you good always. With this in mind, let's take this hymn and close. See how far you've brought me. Ezebube. I'm so glad you found me worthy. I can see and I can tell and I know it's your grace. All my days I will sing your praise. you brought me easy boobie I'm so glad you found me where I can see I can tell and I know it's your grace all my days I will see May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance over you and give you peace. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall dwell with you now and forevermore. Amen. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Turn to your brother and sister and tell him, be holy. And you respond, be blessed. When he said, be holy, respond, be blessed.